Morning, YouTubians. Gary here with VW Jawbreaker. Today, we're hoping that the old 1915, that's now a 2054, is going to fire up. We're going to go ahead and run cam break in process and see what's going on. Now, I know I didn't show every little detail with this build. You can go back into my previous videos, go on my channel to the playlist area, and I have everything broke down. I've got it set up for engine build. I've got it set up for specific engines that I have built, and you can see the process. Look at the titles. A lot of the times, the titles will kind of tell you what that video is about. So please feel free to check out those videos. If you have questions, let me know. Again, I do try to answer all questions. So without further ado, let's get to work. All right, now time for the wonderful fun of setting in play. <clears throat> in play would be the distance that your flywheel and crank moves back and forth throughout the bearings and whatnot. And again, remember, you've got that thrust bearing in the back. So behind here would be where your shims would go and your rear main seal. Right now, I have nothing back there, no shims. No seal, got my gland, chromoly gland, gland nut on, and we've got our dial indicator set at zero. So now what we need to do is go ahead and pull it out all the way, and I have 37 thousandths. Minimum would be three, maximum is five. I need 32 to 34 thousandths worth of shims be able to get my end play set right. So that's really all there is to it. So then we'll go over to the bench. As you see here at the bench, I've got some shims laying out, a bunch of old shims, some new shims in there. Basically what you want to do is get a combination of three with your micrometer and measure out the distance that you need. Put your shim pack in, your three shims, put those in and reinstall your flywheel and then remeasure to make sure you're within the three to five thousand spec. Now that we have our three chosen shims in, the chosen ones, we can go ahead and realign, make sure it's level. Tighten it down. Let's see where we're at. I right, got about three and a half thousandths. That's all the way out. Can you even see? Hold on. Now oh, you got a glare. Hold on. Kick the lights off. All right, so we're set. It's hard for you to tell, but we're set right at zero. And push in. Goes right to about four. Zero. Four. Our in place set to four thousandths. Now what I'll do is once it's off the stand, once everything's off the stand, I will go ahead and remove chromoly gland nut. I will. Put the rear main seal on. Listen to my phone chime again. And then I will add red Loctite to the gland nut and torque it to the proper torque. And then put the clutch on. And then my phone rings. Well, I saved you guys a lot of the boring details, put everything back together. Got a little uh, stand rigged up here to hold my remote oil cooler, oil filter. As you see, and it's kind of hard to see on the bottom one, but that P-clamp right there actually holds the lines in between the headers and keeps them from possibly touching. So I've got plenty of clearance, and then not to mention, I've also got this fiberglass heat shield wrap around it as well. It worked really good on the 1915 so far. 
Wow, I'm really shaky this morning, guys. My apologies. So plug wires are off and plugs are out of it. We got oil. It's time to go ahead and build oil pressure. All right, oil pressure time. All we need is master switch. We don't need coil or tack. I mean, no point in the coil. No plugs in it. Plug wires aren't hooked up. So keep an eye on the oil light. Let's see what happens. Alright, pardon the shaky cam, it's hard to be in one more than one place at once. So after a couple minutes of cranking to get the system primed, and yes, I do like to pre-fill my oil filter and lines just to make sure everything's good. Um, it takes actually a little easier to get it primed. But if you notice, our light will go out, and then we'll go over and show you the gauge. I'd say that's some pretty good oil pressure. So now we'll go ahead, put plugs in it, hit the gas, and do the cam break in. Fire in the hole.
I got all the fans going right now, try to keep the garage aired out, but cam break-in went well. Still need to dial in the jetting and change oil, adjust valves, all that, but she's running. Hopefully I remember to input all the time lapse. Not running air cleaners yet, but everything's plumbed, everything's wired. Guys, we're getting ready to go ahead and fill up the float bowls. And do a cold start on the 2054 and its new home. this another try if this is all I did messing up I think I'm doing okay I use vice grips 
to clamp the fuel line. If you want to run your vehicle, take the vice grips off so you get fuel. Got everything finished up, installed, air cleaners, all 10. Hopefully you can hear me over the wind. We've got a heck of a storm rolling through and I've had quite a bit of honeydews to do. Well guys, I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you to all the support, the comments, emails, text messages, smoke signals, whatever else that I received I failed to mention. There's been quite a few people that have been pushing me and keeping me motivated to continue this build. I'm not going to lie, the whole debacle with the 1915 nose bearing spinning really defeated me and I almost set fire to everything for lack of better word. It really defeated me, honestly. I definitely can tell that that translated across. I tried not to let it come across that way. But again, quite a few people reached out and really gave me the encouragement, positive motivation, and everything that I needed to keep pushing forward. And there's a long list of you. And I wanted to personally say thank you from the bottom of my heart for the encouragement that I needed. You knew I needed it. I definitely did. Thank you. So unfortunately, with this weather moving through, no ride along today guys next video we're gonna go for a ride and see how this 2054 does this thing should really scoot and i'm excited to take you along so as always guys thank you if it wasn't for you guys i honestly by now i probably would have hung up youtube i really would have so without you i'm nothing so continue to please Support each other, encourage each other, and let's continue to make this small community what an awesome community that it is. So until the next time, be kind to others, uplift others, and be good.